Hello, good evening, and welcome to uh, another um, program in these series, um, which is kind of building up to the excitement that is Steampunk over Ether, 25, 25th and 26th of April. Now, we've put a call out for content um, from performers and, um, and artists and so on, and we've had a great response from performers. We've had lots of people um, already sending videos in and, um, and talking to us about doing maybe a, a little live sequence or an interview during the weekend, during the festival. So that's all good. Um, but in some ways, uh, that's not, uh, you know, that's, performers have generally got video setups. I mean, they're generally doing videos. They're doing videos for their music, they video their performances. Um, it's uh, maybe everybody else who who we're really looking for content from, who perhaps uh, you know people who've perhaps never even videoed themselves before and never done anything before. And so that's the idea of this this program really is to is to kind of help uh, demystify the whole business of maybe shooting a video. Uh, maybe you think that um, you know you need um, great quality uh, great quality equipment or professional performances in order to submit something or send off a video. Well, it's not true. Um, here's the thing. In today's, um, today's world of Facebook and YouTube and all these things, um, you don't need, people aren't expecting really high quality video anymore. What's more important is actually authenticity. And in fact, sometimes if you shoot something with really high quality equipment, it doesn't feel authentic. Uh, in fact, that's one sometimes why company brand videos often feel a bit kind of bland and and and, um, and uh, untruthful, perhaps. Uh, authenticity, whereas you know you get a clip on YouTube and 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 uh, it can make such a difference. It's just badly shot, but the content is brilliant, and that's really what it's about. Um, the most important thing is the story. It's what you're trying to say. It's the uh, what you're trying to put across. What you're trying to tell. So the story, the content, that's what's important. And let's face it, we're steampunks. You know, we 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 basically um, it's all about the community. Uh, it's, we're it's all about having a go. It's all about doing things. It's all about being creative. And so, uh, and I have to say, um, we are the you know most encouraging, most encouraging and least judgmental community that I know of. I mean, if they'll accept Count Rostov's comedy, for goodness sake, they'll accept anything. <laughs> So what you say is just far more important than the technology you say it with. So, oh, I've got a question here. Um, hi, Philippa, and um, from Malika, what kind of videos are you looking for? That's, that's actually a good question. So what are we looking for for Steampunk Over Ether? Well, we're looking for um, content. We're looking for people to show us perhaps what they're making, what they're working on. So as you would if you were going to a real festival, you know, you'd be dressing up. You'd be uh, maybe making things. You'd be um, perhaps doing a presentation or workshop or looking to take part in one. Well, we want all of that sort of stuff as videos, really, so we can do it virtually, so we can do the same things, but virtually. So if you're working on a costume, show us that. Show us, show us the process. Show us, or just show us the costume. If you're working on a gadget, you know, show us how you made it, or perhaps just, again, just show us the gadget. Um, so we're looking for all sorts of stuff like that. If you're an artist, um, send in some images. Uh, obviously, if you're a musician, then send in a recording. Anything like that is what we want. But from the community... Like I say, I'm looking for to, to for us to share what we're doing as we, as we would at a real festival. So that's the kind of videos really we're looking for, and that's what this uh, little program is kind of designed to help you with. Um, it's a quick run through of what's involved. Now I'm not going to show you every piece of software or technology um, that that's out there. That's that's you know. Um, I don't think that's an issue. You can you can learn those things elsewhere. But I think a lot of people don't have a go because they basically think um, that they're not good enough or that they think they need lots of kit and lots of equipment. Or well, they don't even know where to start. So I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview to show you what's involved. Um, and I'm going to be asking questions if anybody's got questions about making videos and so on. But um, I will say that as in all things, uh, as we know as a community of makers, YouTube is your friend. If you want to know how to do something, if you want to know how to make a particular piece of a costume or if you want to know how a technique or whatever, something like that, then quite often you'll go to YouTube. It's exactly the same with making videos. There's loads of instructional videos out on YouTube and loads of reviews of different kit and so on. So YouTube is definitely your friend when it comes to this sort of thing. Um, now, uh, <clears throat> I can see your questions. I'm going to be looking over here um, because I can see your comments and questions. So if you've got any comments and questions, um, then I'll be looking over this side of the screen to answer those. But I also, because I've got a lot to cover today, I'm also going to be looking over that side of the screen because I have a little prompt script so that I don't miss anything out and I get everything in the right order. Um, so hello, hello, Duncan. So somebody else has joined us. That's great. 
Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to talk about um, hardware and software in a couple of different ways. I'm going to talk about how to do it with the stuff you might have lying around your house already, um, because you know we're, we're, we should be self-isolating, so it's unlikely we're going to be able to get out the shops to buy stuff. And you can order stuff from places like Amazon, for instance, but at the moment the delivery times are really quite long. Uh, I wanted to buy something um, for the festival, uh, 25th, 26th April, uh, but the delivery time wasn't until the, in May, so that wasn't any good to me. So uh, you've got to make do. And that's what we're good at, Steampunks. Let's face it, we're good at making do. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk also about the software you can use. Uh, and as we go along, I'll be throwing in a few tips and so on. So let's start with a few general things. Um, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what kit you get, what your kit you're using, whether you're using, you know, a, simp a simple smartphone to, to, to make a video or that you're using a really expensive kit. There's two things that you have to get right. And then that's, uh, or, you know, you need to think about, and that's lighting and sound. Those two things are key. Um, so, you know, you can get away with shaky camera work. You can get away with all sorts of stuff. But if people can't see what you're doing or they can't hear what you're trying to say, then it's not working. It's not going to work. So let's talk about um, lighting first. And I have to put my hand on my heart. My lighting setup here isn't brilliant. Um, I'm in front of a window, but obviously the light goes down at a certain point, so I lose that. I've got um, some lighting in the room, but they're just, just normal bulbs. I'm actually shooting this in my office, as you'll see in a bit. So, uh, oh, I've got a comment from here from Ian. Just uh, it's made me laugh. Nice corridor. Yes, um, uh, I'll talk about this later on, but this corridor is courtesy of Claire Pesey of Autumn Sky. Um, so we'll talk about it in a bit. Um, yeah, so um, so lighting is really important. And one of the one of my things I really want to get right is the lighting. So longer term, that's one of the things on my list is to buy some better lighting. But I guess you can see me, hopefully. Um, or, or that might be unfortunate for some of you, but you can see me. And uh, so it can't be that bad. So lighting is good. Now, um, Daylight is the best. So it's, uh, you know, if you can go into your garden and record something in the daylight, that's brilliant because uh, daylight is by far the best light. It's, it's, um, it has a great quality to it. But of course, the problem in this country with daylight is that, um, is that it's, you know, you can't rely on it. You, you know, you've got, you got to rely on the weather and you've got clouds and everything else. So, um, and also, of course, if you're outside, you might have problems with the sound because you might have car alarms going off, you have next door's kids playing in the garden. So again, that's difficult. So sometimes you have to be indoors. But if you are indoors recording, then you can be by a window. Or if you're, you know, live streaming at night when there's no daylight, then try and get daylight bulbs because um, daylight bulbs can make a difference. So just make sure that, you know, you've got some decent lighting. Now, <clears throat> Some camera, you can make some camera adjustments. The software I'm using at the moment allows me to change the temperature and the saturation. So the saturation is the amount of color, and the temperature is whether it's um, blue or red. Um, and in fact, I have tweaked my camera a little bit, so I'm a little bit kind of um, a little bit rosier than, than the camera would, would show me. Um, so you can play around with it a little bit um, if you haven't got quite the right lighting. Um, so Sound is really important. Um, the good quality sound is actually very important. So make sure there's no background noises. Um, low hums and uh, sudden noises are the worst. So so try and eliminate those. And the best thing to do is always to test the sound first. So make a recording, listen to it back, and see if you can spot anything that's not quite right about it. Um, <clears throat> One thing I would do, especially if you're using a smartphone, is always video in landscape format. Um, so always video with a landscape format, not portrait. Um, because in landscape, the landscape format is what most websites are looking for. So Facebook, YouTube, um, and if you're going to use it somewhere else, then landscape is generally the most used format. Now, that's a little bit different if you're videoing something special for Instagram or some of these other social media um, uh, channels. But generally, uh, you want to be filming in landscape. Use a tripod. Uh, tripod's really important to hold the camera steady. Again, if you're using a smartphone, try and find something that you can clamp the smartphone in place um, so that you you know it doesn't move about. Um, and worst comes to worst, there are lots of um, uh, tutorials on YouTube about DIY stands for for iPods, iPad, um, iPhones, and smartphones generally uh, made out of things like cardboard, coffee cups. There's even one that's made out of old credit cards. So so there you go. <clears throat> um, Another way to um, record a video uh, is to use the camera um, and the microphone on your laptop or your computer. 
It's a quick, simple way to go direct to Facebook or YouTube or just to record some footage. Um, they do have some limitations though. Now I've got, um, I'm actually using a webcam right now. So I'm just going to switch to this camera. Now this is the camera from my computer. And if I if I change the angle of the screen, you can see it changes the angle of the it changes the angle of the camera, obviously. Um, and if you're on a laptop, sometimes that can be a real pain because you have to put the screen at an angle you can't actually see the screen. So the camera works, or you have to put the camera at an angle that you can't read the screen, so that doesn't work. So having a, having a camera separately means you can you know you can move it around. Um, and you can have it a completely different angle to the screen or you can have it somewhere else entirely um, so for instance if I just grab this I don't know what this is going to look like but I'm just going to switch cameras again there you go you can see a uh, side on view and then my untidy office so it allows you to do stuff like that which of course you can't do with the with the camera that's stuck to your stuck to your computer um, uh, you can actually get apps um, that um, will turn your smartphone into a camera so you can get an app for your phone that will either via wireless or via a, a cable will allow you to use it as a camera and again this is quite good because it gives you a second camera if, you, if you're using your computer and your laptop but it also frees you from that problem of having a static camera at the wrong angle so it's actually quite useful um, you know if you're doing a workshop or something because you can have it focused down on, on your hands and then you can have the uh, you know, the main camera pointing at you, so you can switch between the two. So that's quite useful. Um, you can also use traditional still cameras as well. Many modern digital cameras allow you to plug in and use them as cameras, again, either via a cable or wirelessly. And of course, quality then is very good because the lenses on traditional on those traditional cameras are great. Um, oh, okay, Andy's uh, got a good comment, and I agree. Um, if you've got one, then some selfie sticks you can unscrew the phone holder part and you can then screw that onto a camera driver that's a really good tip thanks Andy um, so all, all these tips by the way anybody else who's been making videos um, and doing stuff then please please contribute um, this is just my take on it there may be better ways of doing these things and different ways of doing these things this is just a way to do these things so that's a that's a great tip um, so um, there's, uh, the biggest improvement, though, I think um, you can make is generally to the sound. Um, and um, uh, so their separate microphone is what you're looking for. And you can use a USB microphone, and these are probably the easiest and simplest options. So they just plug into your computer and they give you a separate microphone. There's a very popular one called the Yeti, which is used a lot for podcasts and is very easy to use. Um, so that's probably probably a great way to do it. Um if you want, um, if you want to go one better, then you can use professional microphones, and we'll we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, and that's a great way to to capture good quality sound. Um, and once again, I'll stress it's better to have a go than to wait for better kit. So you know, just go out there and video stuff, video stuff on your phone, and do stuff. Just do stuff. You know, it's like anything else. You learn most from doing it. So don't wait for better kit. Don't don't think you have to get better kit to do it. Just go out and do it. Um, now, <clears throat> I thought it might be interesting to show you what I'm using uh, to do this um, uh, fairly kind of um, simple uh, amateur setup that I'm using to live stream to Facebook to you right now. Um, and I should point out that uh, the kit I'm using is fairly professional and fairly good. It, if there's any amateurish, it's completely down amateur amateur input. It's completely down to the presenter. So I'm just going to um, show you the camera that I normally use. So this camera here, uh, let's see if you can use it. Yep, yeah. it's a Logitech 920. It's um, it's been around for quite a while. I actually bought this some some while back actually for using for Skype meetings um, for my business. Um, and um, uh, you can uh, pick up one of those for about 75 quid on Amazon. Uh, there is a slightly newer model, um, and uh, I mean that's that's kind of you can pay more but that's pretty top of the range for, for a webcam and you can pay a lot less and still get a better webcam than you'll get in your in your computer and and uh, laptop um microphone wise just let me switch back oh a bit high microphone wise um i use a um rode nt1a which is a condenser microphone 
Uh, I actually have a Shaw um, SM58, which is the classic um, lollipop style microphone. And I use that on stage for stand-up comedy and so on. And it's a fantastic microphone. But uh, I wanted something that I had in my office all the time. And, and one of the things I was finding that was taking so long to set stuff up that by the time I got it set all up, I hadn't got time to do anything. So I wanted a, a set of kit that I could just set up and leave and have in place so that um, when I wanted to do something, I just press a switch and away I go. And that's basically what I've got now. Um, so I've got this fitted with an anti-shock mount, which is this thing here, and a pop screen, which is this big thing on the front here. And um, and uh, the anti-shock mount basically means that if the microphone gets knocked, you don't get you don't hear that uh, on the microphone, or it doesn't pick that up. And the pop screen basically stops when you go that sort of noise. It can sometimes um, you know affect the way the microphone sounds. And I'm a terrible microphone user. Can I just say I'm useless at uh, using microphones? Um, and so I need every all the help I can get now. This comes as a bundle, so you can get the microphone, the pop screen, and the anti-shock mount, and that's around about 150 quid. And again, that's this is a professional kind of solution. Now, um, okay, uh, uh, Philippa, what was that mic again? Okay, I'll just repeat that. I will put these things in the comments, actually. If, if people are interested, I'll, I'll put the stuff I'm using. Um, this is a Rode nt1a condenser microphone and like i say it comes with a bundle it's a pretty good bundle there are two or three bundles out there actually you can get there are some quite good usb microphone bundles as well you can get which have kind of a few bits of kit um but this is the one that i that i picked um and i've got this whole thing on an angle poise it's a it's a special angle poise mount that rode makes and it basically clamps to the edge of, edge of the desk it, actually if i could just switch over briefly and then back again you can see on the edge of my desk that's actually a clamp i don't know how well you can see that but that's clamped to the edge of the desk um and that i, I like that because it basically means that if i'm working i can um, i can hoik it out of view, i can hoik it out the way to work and i can hoik it back in again when i want to do some um do some recordings so it um for me it it you know it's it's worth its its weight it's, it's costs about 68 quid to be honest because it's it's made by road themselves but it's honestly i think it's worth the money again most of this i've bought for my business um now the only thing i would say is that with a professional microphone uh you do have to pay a little bit more for another gadget and that's basically a box these professional microphones like the Shaw, like this Rode and like some others, uh, they need power. They need fat, well, they call what's called phantom power. So they need power, but also they're not USB. So in order to plug them into your computer, you need a little interface box. Um, and you can, but you can pick these up for about 15 quid. They're really not expensive. So um, those are, you know, the, they're, they're, there's loads of them you can get. Um, and they're quite simple. And you just, like I say, you just plug your professional mic into it and then you plug that into your USB socket and away you go. Uh, and that will get you, that setup will get you a really professional sound and you won't, you won't get a lot better than that. Um, now I, I went down a slightly different route. Um, so I didn't, I didn't go for a box. I wanted to be able to plug in more than one microphone. And I also wanted to plug in maybe, uh, occasionally an instrument or, or a keyboard or something else. So what I actually went and did, I'm going to just show you on the other camera if I can. Um, just see how this comes out. So, uh, there we go. Yeah. So I actually went out and bought a little mixer and this mixer is a combined mixer and, um, USB interface. And it's actually made by Behringer. This particular model is the Zenix QX1002 USB. Such lovely names they have. Um, and those, as you can see at the top there, it's got lots of different, uh, inputs for different um, things so you can plug in different microphones and uh, guitars and stuff like that and cd players and so on and then it's got lots of controls so you can control the bass the treble the mid-range and it's also got an effects unit built in so you can actually um you can actually um do stuff like uh, reverb and um, echo which to be honest i don't use but um you know you could use might be fun um now um that's um uh, 
you can pick up an eight channel one for about 60 quid, which when you consider you're paying about 15 quid for a, for an interface box anyway, you know, 60 quid for a mixer is brilliant. Uh, the 10 channel one that I've got is about 95 and it's brilliant because I can use it. I can take it with me when I go out on the road and it gives me a mixer that I can use for gigs and things like that as well. So, and it's great, um, you know, if you want to plug a few different things in. So um, it's a um, really nice piece of kit. Now, just emphasizing once again, most of this kit I bought for my business. So um, it's, you know, I I, based, I basically thought this was a reasonable spend. Um, but remember, you don't need all this stuff. Um, if you do want to take it to the next level, though, that's the sort of thing you need to look at. Separate microphone, a separate camera, and perhaps some, some good lighting. Um, just to complete my setup, I've got um, a pair of um, monitor, monitoring earphones. Uh, for monitoring the sound before I before I start, um, so and also when I'm doing when I'm editing sound or music, they're really useful. But the best bit, actually, the best thing I bought, I don't know if we can see this, but the best thing I bought is actually the extension cable. <laughs> I can guarantee, I can definitely recommend getting an extension cable on your headphone lead. Uh, it means you're not tied to the desk; you can move around a lot more. So, uh, so I definitely recommend getting one of those very cheap, very cheap upgrade. Um, I've also got a pair of reference speakers, uh, and by reference speakers, I mean a pair of speakers that don't alter the sound. Um, generally, most speakers you buy for listening to music actually try and improve the sound. And obviously, if you're listening to music, that's what you want. But if you're trying to listen to what something um, sounded like, um, if you want to listen to what something sounds like, then you need a pair of speakers that don't alter the sound. And that's what reference speakers are. So I've got a pair of those. Um, they're also great general speakers. So that's some of the hardware. As I say, you can start off by by just shooting stuff on a phone. It's not a problem. Um, so what software can you use? Uh, what can you use um, uh, to shoot these videos, edit these videos, and get them out there? Well, um, on a phone, there's some great apps available. Uh, so if you have an iPhone, then obviously iMovie is a really brilliant thing for editing and putting together movies. Uh, you can record it on your phone and then you can edit it and do all sorts of stuff with it with iMovie. It comes with a phone, so it doesn't cost you money, and it's it's brilliant. But if you don't have that or you don't use that, then there's lots of different apps out there for iPhones and Android-based phones. Um, there's things like Filmora Go, and I'll put all these in the, in the comments afterwards. Um, there's Adobe Premiere Rush. Um, uh, also on an Android, there's things like Video Show or Power Director. So there's lots of different things you can use. Um, if you're on a desktop or a laptop computer, then you could look at things like Blender, Lightworks, AvidMux, or Shotcut. Again, if you're on a Mac, then uh, look at using iMovie. If you're on a Windows machine, use uh, there's a thing called Machete, which is which is quite good. Um, so there's lots of different apps you can use. Um, and don't forget, if you're just going live to Facebook or YouTube. You don't need any of those. You just go straight live to YouTube or Facebook with your phone. Um, uh, if you if you do go live, do try and find something that records it though, because it's always useful to have recording afterwards. Although of course it is saved on YouTube and Facebook after you go live. Um, if you wanted to pay more and get something more professional, then you're looking at something like Adobe Premiere or perhaps Lightworks Pro. Now. If you're making podcasts or you want to work with music or sound and create a soundtrack, um, then on the Mac you can do that with GarageBand and pair it with iMovie. You've got a fantastic um, uh, production setup there. Um, but a great free tool is Audacity. And Audacity is brilliant for editing sound files or playing around with sound or recording sound. Um, and that works on both PCs and Macs completely free. And I used to use that for everything. Uh, I tend to use Adobe Audition now, but that's only because I've got Adobe Creative Suite through my business. Now for live streaming, what I'm what I'm doing at the moment, I'm using some software called Ecan on the Mac. Um, it's Mac only, unfortunately, but it's a brilliant piece of software. It's very easy to use. It takes multiple inputs, so I can get an input from cameras, multiple cameras. I can get an input from Skype, which is how I'm doing the interviews that I've been doing. So basically, I can bring in a sk Skype as a, as a uh, as an input. Um, I can create a virtual camera with it. So anything I'm doing on this screen, I can then send to something else. So if I wanted to use another bit of um, software or I was going somewhere else, I could actually send this to that as a camera, 
which is quite a neat little thing. But it also allows me to put do things like um, put um, overlays on the screen. So if I move this around, you can see that's uh, that's you know allow, um, that capability is part of the software. Um, and um, and it's it's just very very easy to use. Now, if you're not using a Mac, there's a thing called um, OBS Studio which is, again, free and very good. It's slightly more complex, but it will do everything you need. Um, and you can, again, you can record with that as well. So you might use that as your only bit of software. Um, so, um, so OBS Studio and Ecamm on the Mac, two great pieces of software. Now, they both support green screen. And um, so uh, green screen is a, is, a, is a fabulous thing. It used to be the province of um, very expensive TV companies and so on, but um, but these days you can do it with any kind of piece of software. Um, so I'm going to just destroy the magic a moment. And so if I switch green screen off, there you go. You can see I've got a green screen behind me. And um, I'm just uh, displaying, using that to key in um, an image. So I've got a range of images here. Uh, and um, so I can be, let's see, I can be in uh, a very um, uh, fake looking home office. So there you go. I'm now in home office. Look, this is this is my wonderful. I wish this was my office. It's very clean. Um, and, oh, Andy, good. Good man. Let me know how you get on with that. Um, I've, I've got it as well. I, I'm using Ecamm at the moment on my Mac, but I have got OBS and I did want to play around with it. So do let me know how you get on with that. So, yeah, so I can be in a fake office. Uh, it can be in a castle. Um, the there's a few there's a few here that I really like. These these have been created for me by Claire PC of Autumn Sky, and they're really nice. So I've got quite a range of lovely backgrounds that I can use. Um, this one I like a lot. I think I think Rostov might be used that one at some point. Um, and then uh, there's there's ones that I've pulled in from other things that she's done. But um, but at the moment my favourite one. Um, where is it? There we are. It's the airship. So I'm going to use the airship. Um, <clears throat> now I'm just going to actually, I'm just going to switch this off again because I'm just going to show you. Um, I'm going to zoom out and you can see there the green screen. So it's actually, it's, um, it's actually a pop-up screen. So this behind me, it's actually pops up like those tents, those annoying tents that are really hard to put away. Um, it's, this is much harder to put away, but you can put it away once you get the knack of it. Um, and um, and it's a lovely piece of kit, and I bought it mainly because I didn't have the room to have anything um, anything permanent in there. Um, so it's 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 a nice thing that just pops up. Um, if you haven't got you know if you haven't got the money to do that, then just use a bit of green fabric. <laughs> Hang on, there you go. Just use a bit of green fabric. Um, so uh, I had this up on the back wall originally. But um, but the problem with it was that uh, I needed to get access to the cupboards that are behind behind it, so uh, that wasn't going to be a, a long term solution. So I went for something I could just pop up and use, and I've got this on a on a microphone stand, so that's all. It's just hanging off a microphone stand. Um, so that's um that's talking about the, some of the software you can use so um like i say for the live streaming and and you can also use this for recording ecam on the mac is brilliant and obs studio uh for pcs and the mac as well is also good um you've you've got you could got you can use ecam for free um to do certain things and then you can pay for it and get a whole load of other capabilities um and obs is is free um so uh okay malika you want a gin parlor map backdrop okay i'll see if i can make that happen i'll see if i can make that happen so we're going to be doing some stuff over the weekend of the 25th 26th of april um steampunk over ether and malika is going to be my co-conspirator in that and so um it'll be quite handy to uh to have some different backgrounds so gin parlor would be very appropriate for uh, lady m i think um, so you've made this amazing video on your smartphone. Um, you can post it to Facebook and YouTube without kind of anything else. That's fairly straightforward. But what about if you want to put it on your desktop or if you want to put it on your laptop or you've got a new laptop and you want it on your desktop or you want to give it to somebody else? Well, um, I use um, Dropbox, which is um, uh, a cloud-based system, a uh, bit of software. And Dropbox is just brilliant. Um, I basically have it um, on my Mac. I have it on my phone i've got it on my ipad i've got it on my pc laptop 
Uh, and Lady M even has it um, as well, so we can share files. And basically anything I put in Dropbox, I can get from any of those devices. And also, if I'm somewhere else, uh, I can log into Dropbox over the net and pick up files from there too. I can also share folders, so I can make things available to anybody else, or they can drop stuff into those folders. So I like Dropbox a lot. It's, it's, it's a brilliant piece of software. I use it. And um, uh, it, there are other lots of other systems out there. You know, there's things like Google Drive. There's um, Microsoft's OneDrive and things like that. But I like Dropbox. It's been around the longest. Um, it's the thing that is most compatible with other things because it's it's non-proprietary and uh, i'm not always sure that i trust google and microsoft with all my with all my files so dropbox is brilliant but you know you can use google drive you can use um, all these other things as well they, they work equally well but that's a great way to transfer stuff from one computer to another or between computers but if you're sending if you want to send a file to somebody Perhaps the easiest way to do it is with um, we transfer, and that's that's what we're we're saying. Is if you've got videos, you can actually um, you can email them to um, news@steampaper.co.uk, which is down here. Um, so you can email them to there, but they might be too big to email. Sometimes if they're a big file, they're going to be too big. So you can e so you can use we transfer um, dot com. It's very easy to use. You just go to the website, um, you upload your file, you type in the email address you want it to go to, you type in your own email address, press a button and off it goes. Um, so there is a paid for option, but the free option actually allows you to send, um, I think it's up to two gigabytes. That's a hell of a big file. So <clears throat> we're asking if anybody's got videos, they're shooting videos, they want to send them to us, um, then basically send it to use at steampaper.co.uk. So um, Duncan, you heard of we transfer what is it have i explained it have i explained it well did you make did that make sense it's basically a website you can go to you can upload your file to it pick a pick a um uh, email address to send it to and um, off it goes it's very simple and then the person at the other end gets a link and they can click on that and they can download it through the browser which obviously allows you to download much bigger files than your email software does it's very very simple um uh and that's really me covering all the kind of stuff. So we've talked about um, the kind of... Oh, thanks, Duncan. I have apparently explained it uh, well, so that's all right. Um, oh, Andy again. Thanks, Andy, for all this help. That's very useful. So Andy's saying, if you're filming on Android, it will auto-upload to Google Photos. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Um, you can then pull it off the browser version onto PC or presumably Mac. Yes. Yes, and the, I mean you can you can do that with the, there's you know you can do that on the on the Mac as well with Apple software, iCloud software, and so on. I just happen to like Dropbox because it works with anything, and it's been a, I've, I've been using it a very long time. Um, so we've talked about you know filming stuff, and rem remember I said you can just, just start off with your smartphone, and the important things are to get the lighting right and the sound right. Make sure do tests before you go to the final thing. And then um, record stuff and send it to us. We, we're basically looking for, um, as I said at the beginning, um, anything at all. Um, so we're looking for stuff uh, that you, for examples of stuff you're making, things you're working on, things you're wearing, uh, you know, um, gadgets you're, you're working at. Or just just tell us about um, steampunk, you know, tell us about um, different elements of steampunk, read something, anything at all, really and send it into news at steampaper.co.uk or use WeTransfer to send it to news at steampaper.co.uk. If you've got any questions, then please email us or message us on this on the um, Steam Paper page. Uh, so do send us messages there. Um, ah, Colin um, <coughs> is saying we use Dropbox and we transfer for our comic files. Thanks, Colin. Um, Colin uh, uh, is responsible for the welcome to the asylum return to the asylum comic books amongst other things um and uh we're hoping we can get a chat with him uh, at some point on here as an interview about uh, comics and uh, steampunks um so um so that's it really if you've got any questions um then as i say please do email us at, at news at steam paper or comment on this page 
and uh, we'll get back to you. Um, other than that, thank you very much for watching. And I hope that's been a help in helping you to lose your fears and perhaps record something if you'd not done it before. Um, we'll be back with some more videos next week, some more interviews. Uh, we've got one lined up with uh, Dr. Jeff, I hope, and a few other people. And um, so that's going to be good. Oh, and you should have received Steam Paper. Um, Steam Paper's gone out. And it's got lots of stuff about what people are doing on the net. There's some fabulous things going on. People are people are really coming out of the woodwork and, and, and doing some amazing live performances and doing stuff to entertain people. It's been really brilliant um, seeing the seeing the whole of the community respond to to you know the, to this situation. Oh, uh, I've just been told I'm going. Yeah, so I've got to finish now. So I'm going to finish um, at this point. <clears throat> so yes, uh, see you again soon. Bye.